Just how crazy is Joe Biden? Time for some State of the Union talk because that was wild. That was one of the most wild State of the Unions I've ever seen. It was all the... It was like all the best of Joe Biden. It was all the slurs, all the stutters, just the lost in train of thought. When he'd get off script, it went real bad for him. A lot of boos, a lot of cheers, all the things. He was yelling, he was whispering, and did all the things. I was watching it via uh, TimCast IRL. And they actually kept track. They tried to keep track of how many times uh, Joe Biden kind of slurred his words. And it's was probably an undercount at the time, but they ended up calling it around three or 113 times in a speech that was not that long. I think it was under 45 minutes, if I recall correctly. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take, I've, I've got a few clips here of uh, some of the, my, my more favorite moments. And so we're going to view those. If you haven't seen it, this is a good way to kind of get some highlights. And uh, we'll discuss why I like them. First one up. History is watching. Just like history watched three years ago on January 6th. Yeah. Of course, January 6th was going to be mentioned. It had to be mentioned. I mean, the State of the Union happens every year, right? So we got to keep talking about what happened three years ago. When insurrection stormed this very capital and placed the dagger to the throat of American democracy. Many of you are here on that darkest of days. Darkest of days. We all saw with our own eyes. The insurrectionists were not patriots. They'd come to stop the peaceful transfer of power, to overturn the will of the people. There's, there's already been two flubs, if you haven't guessed, if you haven't noticed that yet. It's, it was like this the entire time. It was more than one a minute, I'm pretty sure. January 6th lies about the 2020 election and the plots to steal the election posed a great, gravest threat to U.S. democracy great, since the threat. Civil War. That was not pronounced properly in any fashion. I think we were past tense, we were present tense, and we're back to past tense again. I'm not really sure. But it's definitely, like Donovan says, every day it's January 6th now. That's the way it goes. If you're not bringing it up every single day and talking about how they, the insurrectionists tried to stop the, the overturning of the power, then you're doing wrong. But they failed. But they failed. They America stood. So that's there's one down. The the one I liked, but he repeated the line "history is watching" multiple times. And I don't know. I'm trying to think. I don't know if I've ever actually heard the term "history is watching." It it seems to me like that's another top of mind thing. Like it's close enough to something that everybody says, but I don't think that's the right way people have been saying it. Like, you know, history is watching. I'm like, I don't know if that's right, man. Like, you can kind of get it, I guess, but history's not watching shit, dude. History is history. It's just happening. We, we are making history. Maybe that's, I don't know. Like, I just, I can't get to this one. I think this is another fucking top of mind. And everybody's going to start saying history's fucking watching. History's watching. I think that's ridiculous, but... I firmly believe the DNC is using Biden to scoop up the delegates and swap them to someone else at the convention. I 100% agree with you, good sir. I 100% agree with you. Who will it be, though? Gavin Newsom? Oh, I saw a really great, uh, a really, really good video of uh, uh, Michelle Obama as, what's his name? The guy from Idiocracy, uh, the president in Idiocracy. Can't remember his name, but he's like he has this campaign speech that he does, and it's phenomenal. Oh, we're gonna pull it up. Just screw it. We're just gonna pull it up. We're gonna get intermittent grab bag today. It's, it was like President Camacho, and he was yeah, I think it was Camacho, and he was doing a Brondo ad. So let's let's just have a little fun before we get more into the State of the Union. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Shut the fuck. This this will literally save your life. So if you're about 45 or 455 like me, get your ass checked. Oh, he is. Pitch to COVIDians. There it is. <laughs> President candidate Michelle Obama. This is killing way too many of my constituents, especially black men. And I need you all alive to vote 2024. I see. 
see you in November. Dude, AI is getting too much. You shouldn't be doing that. You should not be doing that. It's too funny. Oh my god. Okay, so let's do uh get some more Biden action here, huh? This will be a good one. My predecessor. Let's pull it up. And what else you got for us there, Mr. State of the Union? My predecessor and some of you here seek to bury the truth about January 6th. I will not do that. I've already done that. I made sure nobody got the tapes to find out what was going on. Then as soon as the tapes got out, we had to fire Tucker Carlson because he was showing everybody. This is the moment to speak the truth and to bury the lies. Here's the simple truth. You can't love your country only when you win. Does, uh, does somebody want to tell that to Hillary Clinton, please? Or any election where the Democrats didn't maintain power? I'm pretty sure they... Remember, like, uh, Russia stole the last election? Do you remember that one? When, when, when Donald Trump won? Remember how that worked out? Interesting. Interesting how that works out, doesn't it? I thought that was a nice little line from Mr. Joe Biden there. Really saying it quiet, powered out loud. Next video. Some of these, you got to forgive the quality. Some of them are, like, they're obviously recordings people did of their TV or computer. Following. This one, you got to turn the audio way up. This one's a little too quiet. All right, what do you got, Mr. Biden? Following, and with all due respect, Justices, women are not without electoral, electoral power. Uh, excuse me, electoral or political power. He just, he's got the words there. He just can't read them. He says women are, they, not like women are without electoral power. I mean, electoral political power. You're about to realize just how much you can write. But they didn't say any real words there, but then he's essentially kind of, he brought up uh, how Roe v. Wade should be law of land again, and blah, 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 and it's, it's all stupid. And so they, they pan to the justices. And you may notice there is a, there's somebody missing. There's somebody missing in the Supreme Court, and that would be Mr. Clarence Thomas. The Honorable Clarence Thomas, as I believe his, his proper title is, um, just decided not to show up. Um, there's our, our lovely senator back there in the, in the, the white Bob cut, Miss Maria, or, uh, ba, 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 ba. oh man, Maria Cantwell and Patty Murray. There it is, Patty Murray. Um, number three in charge of Democratic uh, power centers. But yeah, it was very interesting that, uh, a, that Justice Thomas didn't go to the State of the Union because they generally all go and then they just sit there and they have to be non emotional and just kind of sit there and listen and. Um, but Joe Bonney wanted, to, he was trying to make the point that, uh, Roe v. Wade is going to come back. Everything's going to be good. And we're going to make sure that we can have protected abortions till, I don't know. I don't even know if he could tell you what it would look like because he's just doing tired talking points of it's the one thing we've been winning on for a long time is, you know, abortion rights. And so he's just going to stick with that. And that's going to go because it, it, it's, it plays pretty well for people. I mean, they've had a lot of good success on state initiatives to set pretty, mm, I'll just say, pretty open abortion laws throughout the country. And in, in states, sometimes that were very surprising. But I don't know if that's going to win you an election, but we'll see. There's plenty. There's so much time. There's so much fucking time to get to the actual general election. This is, it's starting to already drive me nuts, but what else do we got? What is this one about? People pay people, people pay these smugglers 8,000 bucks to get. Oh, this one's good. This one's really good. We're going to rewind this one because we just want to make sure the sound is good because he, you'll see. People pay people, people pay these smugglers 8,000 bucks to get across the border because they know if they get by, if they get by and let into the country, it's six to eight years before they have a hearing. Stop. Fact check true. Maybe that's a problem. Maybe that's a problem. This, is the, this has been your policy, bro. Since day fucking one. And, and you're... Okay, carry on. And it's worth the, taking the chance of the $8,000. But... 
But a lot of pushback in if the it's only six months, six weeks, the idea is it's highly unlikely that people will pay that money and come all that way, knowing that they'll be able to be kicked out quickly. So he's arguing there about the failed border deal that was really more of a international aid package that we talked about a couple episodes ago, I think. Um, there was border funding along with a couple little changes that would have not done that much, but it added a bunch. It supposedly was trying to add a bunch of more money in there for more judges, more courts, but primarily put the power of asylum in CBP directly through Washington, D.C., and that was the main place where they could make the call whether you can stay or whether you have to go. And so he would have essentially sped up the clock on how long it takes somebody to have an asylum beautification done. And right now, like he said, it's six to eight years. So that means you get you you come here illegally, you cross the border, and you get you get your you get to stay here. You get sent to wherever it is that you want to get sent. You get sent with money. You get hooked up with housing, um, and you get to just be here in this weird limbo status for as long as as long as it takes to get your court date, which is going to be six to eight years. And so that's about as, as much incentive as anybody could say. But now he's, he's trying to say, well, if we reduce that time to six weeks, then the incentive to come will, will go away. Except and as if, or, and if you essentially make it so that everybody gets approved when they come across and then it's just a quicker approval. I mean, it's, it's a nonsensical thing to say, but he goes on and then tries to blame the Republicans for not passing the border bill. Folks, I would respectfully say people pay people. People pay people, people, people pay pickles and stuff. Biden just was fine form that night. So good. Next. The vaccine that saved us from COVID are now being used to beat cancer. Turning setback into comeback. That was a very interesting line. The vaccines that saved us from COVID. How's that working out for everybody? But now they're saving people with cancer. Turning setback into whatever, step forward. That's, that's about some back word shit right there, if I've ever heard some. Because I'm... <sighs> I think uh, I've been knowing, I'm pretty sure everybody's getting COVID right now. There's a lot of people getting real sick that I know of, and it's knocking them out hard. And again, anecdotal is all hell, but it, they're all people that got jabbed. So there's that. I don't know. I mean, I've been sick for a while now. Might, might have a touch of the Rona, but it's, I'm fine. I just got a little bit of a head cold. Uh, I mean, you can hear it in my voice right now, but. I don't know. And then I do know there's been some interesting research into the applications of the, in the mRNA technology as it pertains to trying to fight various types of cancers. Um, but as far as I know, it's not like some groundbreaking thing that's saving a bunch of people with cancer. So I don't know what he's on about other than the fact that he's just trying to push the jabs more, I guess. It's, it's very, very interesting. All right, what is next in the State of the Union? We now must beat the NRA again. I'm demanding a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. Pass universal background checks. None Another of interesting thing. Again this year, everybody, all the, here we were white again. I don't, I think it's because it's like international, or it's National Women's Month or whatever. None of this. I taught the Second Amendment for 12 years. None of this violates the Second Amendment. Sure does. Or vilifies responsible gun owners. Yes, it does. My predecessor told the NRA he's proud he did nothing on guns when he was president. Uh, okay. So let's take that step by step. Joe Biden is once again screaming at the top of his lungs that we need to ban assault rifles and high-capacity magazines. Well... You don't even know what you're talking about there, old man. So shut the fuck up and sit down. Tired ass talking point. It's just something I think he has to say because this is their platform. It always has to be their platform. Um, 
as far as his predecessor doing nothing with guns, that is a bald faced fucking lie because Trump did a lot to enable his, uh, his ATF and the justice department to, ch- or, uh, to alter the NFA to fuck over more and more American citizens and make them felons overnight. I mean, the bump stock ban for once for just for one example, I mean, that's, that's it. I mean, he, he was not a near and dear friend of the second amendment. And Joe Biden couldn't teach a fucking thing for 12 years, much less taught the Second Amendment for 12 years. No, no, I mean, it's, you read it, it's pretty simple. Not to be infringed, not, not inf- no infringement. That's all you really need to say. But obviously, he made this a very big talking point in his speech. I mean, to, to say, we're going to ban these. I demand we ban these. First of all, you can't do that and be up to the Congress and, you know, Mike Johnson for who he is, is not going to even entertain that as long as he's in charge of the house and we, and the Republicans maintain a majority there. I do think it's interesting that he's still stuck up on the NRA, which anybody in the gun community these days, the NRA is kind of a, it's still a laughing stock. They, they're not the bogeyman that they were to somebody like Joe Biden back 40 fucking years ago when he was really trying to fight them and get the assault weapons ban in place on the federal level in the 90s, I think. So it just shows you again how much, how out of touch this old man really is and he's got no concept of what he's actually talking about. Um, but we'll let the man carry on some more. Hey, some precedent moment. Different volumes. Hey, some precedent moment in the history of the union. And yes, my purpose tonight is to wake up the Congress and alert the American people that this is no ordinary moment either. Not what? What? Okay. It's a be easier to understand that if he didn't fumble over every other word, but hey, whatever. Not since President Lincoln. Not since President Lincoln and the Civil War have freedom and democracy been under assault at home as they are today. What makes our moment rare is the freedom and democracy are under attack at both at home and overseas. As apparently it has been for ever and ever and ever. Hence all the wars we've been fighting for decade upon decade upon decade. And also anybody that knows anything about Lincoln's presidency probably shouldn't hold him up as the bastion of freedom and liberty. Considering he literally just said fuck the constitution we're gonna we're gonna cut these uh, we're gonna cut down on these rights cut down on those rights and we're gonna have the army do some shit that the army's not supposed to do and we're just gonna start arresting a bunch of politicians and throwing them in jail and freedom of the press man that's funny goodbye not a real true fan, friend of liberty at the very same time <clears throat> overseas putin of russia is on the march invading ukraine and sowing chaos throughout Europe and beyond. If anybody in this room thinks Putin will stop at Ukraine, I assure you he will not. Pause button. The fuck are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? If, if we don't stop Putin in Ukraine, he's going to take over. He's just going to roll into the rest of Europe, huh? Is that, that's the line we're still going with. I can't even, I can't even with this. I mean, we, if you were, if you caught the Tucker Carlson interview with Vladimir Putin, he discussed in great lengths, uh, the history of what he deems Russia and all this good stuff. And yes, it does involve other places, but there has been zero evidence to show that Vladimir Putin is in, interested in anything more than Ukraine. And not even Ukraine in its entirety. It seems to be the eastern portions of Ukraine. The Donbass region and access to the Black Sea. And I mean, it, it, the, the areas that he's been fucking around has only been on the east. In the beginning, you pushed in from the north, that was beaten back. And then every, it's all just been taken on the eastern front. And he's not marching through. <coughs> oh, sorry. Talking a lot. Um. There's nothing that indicates he's interested in the rest of Europe. This, this tired talking point that is 
It comes from the president on fucking down and disseminated through his acolytes in the corporate press to just try to scare everybody that is not paying attention that Vladimir Putin is the next Hitler and it's just going to roll right into Europe and next thing you know, it's going to be World War III. Meanwhile, we just add another state to NATO. So that's, that's good, but we'll discuss that later. This is, I'm just so tired of this talking point. It is not based in any kind of reality whatsoever and it's just used as a scare tactic to get to justify the hundreds of billions of our dollars that are being spent on this super fucking corrupt nation over Ukraine. I got it, dude. You got invaded. It's the whole thing. We've discussed it at great length on this show. But for the president to just get up there and then reiterate a fucking lie that is not based in any sense of reality drives me nuts. But he assures you, Putin will. He will not stop at Ukraine. Don't shake your head, Mike Johnson, you fucking cuck. What you Ukraine. Crazy. Ukraine can stop Putin. Ukraine can stop Putin if we stand with Ukraine and provide the weapons that needs to defend itself. <sighs> That's not good. Not good at all. That is not good. Anyways, that's kind of a, you know, we're used to hearing that now, and it's just, I don't know, it makes my blood boil when they just, they insinuate that sending, continuing to send hundreds of thousands of dollars and just waste away tens, if not hundreds of thousands alive in Ukraine is the deal. That's just, it's, it's what's required to keep the rest of the world safe. Ukraine's in a bad spot, man. They're in a real bad spot, and their their population's fucked for generations at this point. I mean, the amount of young men that have just been thrown into the meat grinder there is not. And to what end? I don't know. I don't know. It's going to be an interesting look back at the end of this thing. It's not good. But we got, I think, one or two more clips from the stadium. Let's check it out. It's not about him. It's not about me. I'd be a winner. Not really. I'd be a winner. Not really. He's about to get distracted by Marjorie Taylor Greene yelling out a name. I'd be a winner. Not really. I. Lake and Riley. Say Lake and Riley. I just look at it. The booze and the look of shame. Lincoln. Lincoln Riley. Lincoln. An innocent young woman who was killed. Okay. There's a lot going on here. We're going we're gonna to retrack again because I want you guys to hear the name. And he's holding up a button that says Lake and Riley on it. Like he, he, he could potentially read it. I believe the font is big enough. And he cannot pronounce that. He says Lincoln Riley. Lincoln Riley. Let's, let's turn it back one more time. And then he really, he really gets into some problems here because he starts talking about the problem with the crime and with the criminal aliens. I'd be a winner, not really. I. I'd be a winner, not really. Lincoln, Lincoln Riley, an innocent young woman who was killed by an illegal. Oh. That's right. That's but how many of thousands of people being killed by legals? To her parents, I say, my heart goes out to you having lost children myself. I understand. But look, if we change the dynamic at the border, people pay people, people pay these. Okay, and then he gets back into that same thing that he said. But obviously, he's got a big problem on his hands there. He did not handle that one very gracefully. That was really, really tough. The Lake and Riley incident was a pretty rough one. Um, if we have time today, maybe we'll cover it a little bit later. I think I got some articles on it, but it's a tragic story. Um, very, very tragic story. A uh, young college girl was out jogging, picked up by an illegal immigrant, tried to rape her when she fought back. He ended up killing her. Not good. And it just adds to more these strings of crime that have been stemming from the fallout from all this 
illegal migration that's just been facilitated wholly by the Biden administration. It's absolutely fucking insane. And for him to just, I mean, he, that was not a good look for him. Even on, I think it was on MSNBC, Nancy Pelosi was joined by her good friend, Jen Psaki, uh, among other people on this panel. And uh, after that moment, um, even Nancy Pelosi said like, oh, you know, he, sh he shouldn't have said that. I mean, we don't, we, we don't really like to use the term illegals. But hey, you know, the man is not doing so hot. So I guess he's just reverting back to his old ways. Who knows? I think this is the last one we got, and we'll, we'll move on. Freedom to be safe. And America is safer today than when I took office. Year before I took office, murder rates went up 30%. 30% they went up. Did you hear that? He says... <laughs> The, the biggest Abigail, increase in history. Marines. It was then, through, no, through my American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against, I'm mad at, we made the largest Say investment. That one more time. Through, no, through my American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against, I'm mad at. It's the dude's all over. He's obviously got frazzled by that guy. So who that man is, cut to him here real quick. That is a gold star father who's... I'm assuming uh, son or daughter, there's uh, a mixed bunch that got blown up in um, at the Abbey Gate over at the, what is the, uh, Kabul National Airport um, during the ridiculously terrible, disgusting Vietnam-era pullout of Afghanistan. There was the terrorist attack on the Abbey Gate in which 13 U.S. Marines were killed. His son or daughter was one of them. And so he got up and he shouted, Abbey, Abbey Gate, the minute Joe Biden started to say this is, you know, the country's never been safer before. Yeah, good luck trying to convince people of that one. And he was merrily escorted out, arrested, and tried with a misdemeanor. So there's that. There's that. But also, I like that flub line that he did there. We'll listen to it one more time. Through, no, through my American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against, I might add. The American Rescue Plan, which every American voted against, I might add. Dude's all over the place. Very, very, very all over the place. Did not hold it together very well once he did that. Welcome to the south of the streets. Coming at you every week. With this food for thought, hope you're ready to eat.